At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the process of modeling an algorithm using vectors and matrices. Follow the process of modeling an algorithm using vectors and matrices and appreciate the significance of vectors and matrices in modeling an algorithm. Before going into challenging and exciting uses of vectors and matrices in modeling an algorithm, it is very worthwhile to, to mention the analysis of our original model. So I will just would like to show this one to you. So we have y is equal to w0 plus w1 x. So this is actually a part of our previous lesson. So with this, we would be able to make comparison of the expression which we are or which are the result of w0 and w1. So before we continue, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to receive updates of our machine learning, deep learning and natural language processing courses. So let's continue. To realize this, what we will do is that we're going to combine w0 and w1 into a single parameter vector which is w. So we have here the combination. Our vector is w, so w. Let's make it more bold. Okay, so we have w is equal to w0 and w1. So now this is the combination vector of w0 and w1. So this is our first step. So now that we have done with, or now that, now that we are done with the two parameters, let's now work on x. So what are we going to do here? So we are going to create vectors xn, okay, by augmenting each xn with a 1. So here we have xn is equal to 1, as you could see here. So we've we've added one for each xn. So we have xn is equal to one, then we have xn here. So later we will have more discussions, especially when we have more entries, okay? So this is our second step. So our next step is to express these two expressions, w and xn, in terms of, okay, I'm sorry. So our next step is to express these two expressions, this one, w0 and w1, in terms of xn and w. So we have here the function of xn with parameters w0 and w1 is equal to w transpose xn is equal to w0 plus w1 xn. So as you can see here, we use the transpose operator for vector w. So we discussed why we do this in our previous lesson. So the link is given in the description below. So you could just go back um, easily and please study that lesson, lesson number 19.1, so that your understanding of this lesson 19.2 would be more significant okay so what does this mean this one so what is the under underlying action in the expression okay so here okay here we can replace any instance of w0 and w1 xn just by having this one okay again let me repeat that we can replace any instance of w0 and w1 xn just by using the transpose of w times xn okay 
So let's take into consideration the squared loss function for better understanding. So using this one, our loss function, I mean using this one, our loss function can be expressed this way. So we have loss is equal to 1 over n of the summation of the squared difference of y n minus w t x n. Okay, so as you can see here, we are actually getting the average of the loss. Okay, so at this point, it may seem daunting looking at this mathematical expression, right? So what we will do here is that we're going to express this average loss as the function of different vectors and matrices. Why are we going to do that? Because this is actually uh, consists of vectors and matrices. Remember what we did here? Okay, so we have combined the two w's and then form it into one vector. In some cases, uh, it would be a matrix, okay, if there would be lots of attributes to consider and also with respect to xn. So that's why we said here that we are considering lots of vectors and matrices, okay? So, um, so for this to be simplified, what we will do is that we're going to transform this expression into this so that so that uh, it would be clearer for us to identify the transpose of the different vectors and the matrices. Okay, so again, what we're going to do here is that we're going to express this average loss as the function of different vectors and matrices. So we have loss is equal to 1 over n, okay, y minus x, w, transpose, and then times the quantity of y minus x, w, right? So using this, it would be now easier to manipulate any data. So considering all of these steps, sometimes it would be, or sometimes it is hard to concretely visualize the whole process. Just, just like um, looking at this one from this step, going to the second step, then going to this step, and then um, understanding how a certain loss function can be processed using the function of different vectors and matrices, okay? So, this time, for us to be able to have a concrete understanding and concrete visualization of the process, let's have this one, okay? So, this is what I've said, that we're going to have more than one x, unlike this one, right? So, we're going to have more, okay? So, here, we've augmented x with a1, and then we get it, its transpose. So we have 1, x1, 1, x2 going to 1, xn. And then we also provide here the value of y, or the values of y from y1 to yn. Okay, so now that we have these two vectors, x and y, we can now multiply x and w. So still remember our w, this one. So we are still going to use this one in this process because it's really an essential part of this process. So without it, we can never continue with our process, of course. So we have xw, sorry, it must be xw, all right. So x times w, so we have this one, times w0 and w1. And then we have this product, w0 plus w1 x1 going to w0 plus w1 xn. 
okay so now that we have the product of x and w the next thing to do is to subtract this from this one from y okay so this is actually y minus x w okay so we're going to do this or this one too okay so here we have y minus x w excuse me is equal to y 1 minus w 0 minus w1 x1 and that is going to yn minus w0 minus w1 xn so if we are going to examine closely this matrix we can use a single multiplication and transpose to neatly perform the squaring and summation so so with this, we can still get our original loss of function. So we have xw minus y transpose xw minus y is equal to, again, we are getting the average as uh, uh, what I mean summation n or summation of y n minus the function of x n with parameters w0 and w1 and then of course we square that okay so I would like to leave this one to you to process how we get this one or how we get this one out of this one okay so in its simplest form our compact version of this form can be written as L minus or L is equal to 1 over N times the quantity of Y minus XW transpose times the quantity of W or Y minus XW. Okay, so this and this are just actually the same. So I would like to leave you the process if you would like to really prove that this and this are the same what is this for why do we have to study this in many machine learning applications we do not consider a few variables only instead we are accepting the fact that we have to deal with thousands of attributes if not just only 100 so these can be dealt with using matrices and vectors. So with this, the results would be more accurate. After all being said and done, let's try this. What are the steps in dealing with vectors and matrices for modeling an algorithm? Can you illustrate each one? Why do we use vectors and matrices in modeling an algorithm? Leave your answers in the comment below so that we would be able to have a very rich interactions and exchange of ideas. You and I can learn from each other. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.